be with you, Brad. Well, once you leave me, you live forever. Does it mean that you pray? No. Is it pray? No. When you hear his voice, who is going to surprise you? Is it you shall never die? Let's signs and praises be given to our God in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let thanks, praises, honor be given to our Father, leader, Olumba, Olumba, Obu, in the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let thanks, praises, honor, Dominion and adoration ever be thine for now and evermore. Amen. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty. Most merciful Father, most compassionate Father, and the most righteous Father. Father, here we are, thy sinful children. Father, we have come once again before the throne of mercy. Father, we have come knowing fully well that we've sinned against the Father. Father, we've done so many unseeming things. We lie, we cheat, Father. We don't even put your words into practice. We've seen against the Father with our entire bodies. We've seen against it through our thoughts, actions, and utterances. Father, we're not worthy to be called our children. But we thank you, dear Father, for indeed you are not like man, for you have said that even though our sins be read as crimson, and that whenever we come to thee with penitent heart, confessing, all our wrongdoings, Father, you did promise you take us back. <laughs> Father, here we are, still on our bended knees, still begging and pleading, Father, for it was for this same reason that you sent your only begotten Son to come and die for the remission of all our sins. Father, we thank you so much for indeed his precious blood on the cross of Calvary has washed us clean both in our bodies and our souls. Father, say thanks and praise be given to thee in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear Father, we thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for all the patience. Thank you also for showing mercy. Through showing mercy, you've given each and every one of us a second chance. A second chance to be good children unto thee. A second chance to always remember thy name. Call on thee. A second chance to do thy work the way it is supposed to be done. A second chance to always speak the truth and practice righteousness so that it do be well with us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, dear Father, for all the wonderful things you've been doing in our midst. We thank you for daily care, daily protection. Thank you, Father, for being the only provider for your children. Thank you also for also being the greatest doctor in our midst. We thank you most sincerely, Father, for healing all our sicknesses. No matter the nature and the duration of the sickness, just by believing and trusting in the Father, you've taken away all our sicknesses, all our infirmities, and afflictions here and there. Father, say the thanks and praise be given to thee in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear Father, your children have come this morning seeking thy face. Thank you for not turning your back on us. Thank you for always being there for us. Thank you for constantly fighting all our secret and open wars for us. Thank you for being an all-conquering God 
We have indeed conquered for all your true children. Amen. Father, we are all seeing us. You've seen all our situations. Thank you for changing all bad situations into good situations. As we were already good situation, Father, thank you for making them to be the best situation. And thank you for finally taking dominion over your entire children. Father, no matter where they are in the world right now, as long as they believe in thee, and they love thee more than anything else, and they also love their brethren, and they have surrendered completely into thy care, by putting all the injunctions into practice, thank you, dear Father, for giving them all what to testify about thy holy name. Amen. Father, say the thanks and praises be given to thee in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father, for constantly being there for us. Thank you for being in front of us. Thank you for also being behind us. Thank you, Father, for whatever the enemies will do to us. Thank you for promptly returning them all back to sender. Thank you, dear Father, for coming down by yourself, sending no one. Through your coming, Father, you've gathered all your children the world over. Thank you also for putting all things into sheep shape order for your children. Where we don't have to envy, quarrel, or fight over. For indeed, Father, you are just enough for each and every one of us. Therefore, I say the thanks and praises be given to thee in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father, for all the things you've been doing for us. Thank you for yesterday. Thank you, Father, for you did glorify yourself in the nobles. Thank you, Father, for putting thy spirit into them. Thank you for your love us so much. You care for us so much, Father. You don't just want us to perish. That's why daily keep teaching us to have love one for another. Thank you for always admonishing us to always do good. So that only good things will follow us wherever we go. Amen. Father, say the thanks and praises be given to thee in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, your children have come seeking thy face. Thank you for not turning your back on us. Thank you for the blessings of today. Thank you, Father, for you have come to change us. You have come to bless us. You have come to deliver us. Thank you for your love us so much. You care for us so much, Father. Thank you, Father, for the time has come. And the time is now for us to love you back. So that all will be well with us for now and evermore. Thanks, praises be given to thee in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let them praises be given to the one and only mighty, mighty God in the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, let all thanks, all praises, all honor, all wisdom, all power, all authority and supremacy be given to thee and thee alone. For now and evermore. We shall praise our fathers who sing from Brotherhood hymn number 326, hymn 326. Shout for great joy, O ye children of Brotherhood. Rejoice ye and exult with all your heart and mind. Olumba has repelled your sentence forever, he has driven away your enemies. From henceforth, you have no more evil to fear. Hymn 326.
chapter 12, verses 22 to 35. Our first Bible lesson is recorded in the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 12, verse 22 to 35. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life what ye shall eat, neither for the body what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn. And God feedeth them, how much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you, with taking thoughts, can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not, and yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. And your father knoweth that he have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that ye have, and give alms. Provide yourself bags which wax not old, a treasure in heavens that faileth not. We are not thief approached, neither moth corrupted. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins be girded about, and your lights burning. Peace may the Father bless the reading of his holy word. Look, chapter 12, verses 42 through 48. Our second Bible lesson is an extract from the Gospel according to Luke. Chapter 12, verse 42 to 48. And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord should make ruler over his household, to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. But and if that servant say in his heart, my Lord delayed his coming and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens and to eat and drink and to be drunken. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him and at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him in sunder and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. May the Lord bless his holy word.
our golden text is taken from Luke chapter 12 verses 54 to 56. Our golden text is taken from the gospel according to St. Luke chapter 12 reading from verse 54 to 56. And he said also to the people, when ye see a cloud rise out of the west, straight away ye say, there cometh a shower, and so it is. And when ye see the south wind blow, ye say, there will be heat, and it cometh to pass. Ye hypocrites, ye can descend the face of the sky and of the earth. But how is it that ye do not descend this time? Peace, may the Lord bless his holy word. Amen. three lessons. Also the spiritual chorus. The spiritual chorus says it all. 
So at this point, I'd like to say you as yes, let him or her hear. Unless you have all come with your membership card now. If you have your membership card here, I will continue. If you don't have your membership card, then I will end it here. Huh? How many have your membership card? Bring them out, I want to see them. Because they tell you everywhere you go with your membership card. How many have your membership card here? So, sorry, I'm going to end it here. There's no membership card. Huh? Father says, carry your membership card everywhere you go. Carry it with you. Only one person has it. Just one. Only one. Who, and I'm taking that one person to the kingdom of God today. And leave the rest of you behind. I'm a brotherhood, born brotherhood, this and that. All that mouth you used to make is going to end today. Where is your membership card? I want to see. I've only noted one there. One person is going to the kingdom of God, oh, new earth and new heaven, where righteousness reigns. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I say, how many have your membership card here? Last call, oh, you can predict the weather. You can predict every other thing. But can you predict God? Can you predict Him? Our Supreme Holy Father says, we should go everywhere with our membership card. But today only one person has a membership card. Some now think wearing white sutan is your membership card. Is that true? What is your membership card? Do you know why Father says you should carry it with you everywhere you go? You don't know. If you don't know, that means you don't even know why you are here. Eh? Do you know why you are here? Now this one is they say heaven was silent. Because nobody has the answer. But you are a brotherhood, right? Eh? I say you are a brotherhood. And you've been here for 50 years. And you have nothing to show for it. Is that good? All you have now is anger, acrimony, hatred. You know? But is that brotherhood? Eh? Everywhere you go, you want to show that you are in charge, that you have arrived, and as so you can command anybody. Where is your membership card now? Anywhere? I'm not for. I'm afraid. You forgot it. How can you forget your membership card? A very important thing like that. Eh? It's supposed to be a part of you. It's supposed to be in you. And as such, you carry it everywhere you go to. You think your membership card is that card? Your membership card, let me tell you today in case you did not know, is love. Without love, don't come here. We don't want you. When you have love, come here. That is your membership card. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If I wanted to deal with you, I said, those who have membership card, go home and bring them now. I would have waited here for you. Whether you live in London or wherever, you go and bring them. But you see, that love, do you have to leave it at home? Because it is in you. You carry it anywhere you go to. And because you have that love, it will open all your doors for you. Enemy sees you with that love inside you. He becomes disorganized. He cannot carry out the plan. Because you are full of love. You are carrying it everywhere you go to. 
Even your enemy, you love your enemy. So you see, love. God is love. Is it not so? God is love. Olumba is love. Brother of the cross and star is love. And what are you? Are you not love? In order to belong, it must be love too. Otherwise, you do not belong here. All the problems that you have is lack of love. If you have love here, you will not have any problem. I say if you have love, you will not have any problem. There will be no moment for lamentation. No moment for weeping. Because here, it is joy, joy. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Is that not the reason you have been told? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And what will happen? Every other thing you stand in need of will be added unto you. Number one, love. You will be given love when you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I know that many of you here don't even have time to seek for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. True or false? They are looking for what you eat today, what you wear, what you do, who you will clobber down and take his, uh, take his or her property, who you will deal with. That's what you are looking for. You come here looking for wives, looking for husband, looking for children, looking for money, looking for wealth. And as such, you can deceive, you can cheat, you can steal in order to get all those things. But when once you seek for the heavenly things, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, every other thing you stand in need of, you've been told and guaranteed that whatever you stand in need of will be given unto you, will be added unto you. But it cannot be added to you if you don't have any love. If I say how many want cash here and money, everybody will lift up their hands. But if I say, I may want the kingdom of God and his righteousness, reluctantly, some people will raise their hands. But that is the main demand. Because without it, you are not thing. If you don't seek for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, you are nothing. No matter if you own all the monies in the world, you are nothing. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Ebe mi so yo mi ano bi u ba Ahe E la mi so yo mi ano bi u ba E te ye na si su o na Ebe mi so yo mu tu mi ma o ro Ebe mi so yo mi ma o lo ba O lo ba ya di am u mo i so Ebe mi so yo mi ano bi u ba I don't need to stand here and ask how many people have love. And then you start raising your hands. It is up to you. Because everything about God 
It's not done by force. You have to do it voluntarily. You have to do it after your good mind. You don't have to force you to have love because this is the key. This is what you need. This is your membership card to God. Because without love, he has no business with you. He must love. You must love yourself, love one another, and love all the things about him. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brother, may we hear our first Bible reading once again. Our first Bible lesson is recorded in the Gospel according to Luke chapter 12, verse 22 to 35. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life what ye shall eat, neither for the body what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn. And God feedeth them, how much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you with taking thought can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not. They spin not, and yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. And your father knoweth that he have need of these things. But rather, seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that ye have, and give alms. Provide yourself bags which wax not old, a treasure in heavens that faileth not. We are not thief approached, neither moth corrupted. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins be girded about, and your lights burn in peace. May the Father bless the reading of his holy word. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Oh. It's the of the Holy Spirit. I'm sure you've heard this text before. But did you understand it? Eh? Seek ye first the things of the kingdom. Seek ye first all the things above. And he says, every other thing will be added unto you. Did you understand it? Today, if you have love, make up your mind to have love today and see whether you ever have any kind of problem again. I said, try it and see, oh, I'm not going to ask you, do you have love? Because out of fear, you say yes, so that people will not laugh at you. He knows you all. He knows you in and out. So you can only deceive man, you cannot deceive him. He knows all those who love him. And he's ready to work with those people. Today you are lazy. You don't work, you don't do anything. You don't lift your fingers. You only lift your finger to beg. God does not want beggars. Eh? If you are a beggar, after begging, can you use that money to go and help another beggar? Or somebody who cannot help himself or herself? Can you? Wouldn't you say, ah, I suffered to beg for this money. And I saw you want to eat it alone. He wants you to use your hands and walk. Because you believe in him, you have love, it will surely bless those hands so that whatever you touch, because you have him, you believe in him, you have love, whatever you touch, you will turn it into gold. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. For lack of love, we steal. Lack of love, we cheat. Lack of love, we dupe people. When you dupe, when you steal, 
What do you think God will do for you? He will clap for you. Or he will say, oh, the man is trying to survive. Whereas he has already told you what to do. And if you do that thing that he has asked you to do, you won't have any problem. You will flourish. You have enough and to spare. You have enough to give out. Because the more you give, the more you'll be blessed for it. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That is why you see, brother of the cross and star is action. I say, brother, it is action. When you preach, you put what you preach into practice. Some people preach, especially time immemorial. Preachers used to preach and they stop there. Eh? They don't go beyond preaching. But in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, when you preach, you go further and put what you preach into practice. That is where your blessing will come from. If you don't practice what you preach, then that is not brotherhood. Is that not why many people are suffering today? Because they preach. They don't put it into practice. That is why some of them, they go begging. They go doing all kinds of things. They even do magic in the name of their God. Are you to do any magic? There's no magic here. Every word of God that you hear, and you put them to practice, you'll be blessed for it. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> what is the real work of God? Practicing what you preach. From your own abundance, to be able to help the poor and the needy, those who cannot help themselves, the handicaps. That is the work of God. You know? You think the uh, work of God is uh, deceiving people to collect uh, what they have, or what? Huh? The real work of God is putting the word into practice. When you hear brotherhood has not started yet, it is true. Because we are supposed to go to those places that don't have roots, we give them root. They don't have water, we give them portable water to drink. Eh? These are the work of God we must do. We cannot just preach love and shout love. Love, love, love. And you have nothing to show for it. When you hear that your work will follow you, what do you think it is? When you have love, and you show love to people, heal the broken-hearted, those in problems, you help them solve their problems. It is not for you to grab, grab, grab all the time, and you don't stretch out your hands to help the needy, the poor, the handicapped. That's why you've been given the mandate to go preach the gospel. I make peace, you know. I mean, I've genuinely done that. Some, the reason you go out for missionary work is what you can get. Maybe from foreign land or anywhere. And you come back and say, oh, I did ministry work to two places. Did you give peace? Did you show love? Huh? Did you show what you are being taught? By our Lord Jesus Christ? What you were being taught by a Supreme Father? Don't you go there for yourself and see what you can grab. Uh-uh. He -uh. said, go into the world and bring in the sheep. Showing them love. Showing them all what I have taught you. How many have done that? I said, how many have done that? But you always boost. You went to ministry work. How many people did you baptize? How many people did you convert unto God? So you see, all the sufferings people have is as, as a result of not having love, not doing the work of God. You stay one place and become rich. You've been told, eat no man food for nothing, oh. Most of us, 
like free food, free things. When well, once somebody gives you free food, you say, ah, the person loves you. Eat no man food for nothing. He must do something to earn that food. He must work for it. If you have love in your heart, he must work for that food. Is that not why they poison you? You go and eat free food. They poison you and you die for it. But if you had worked for that food, would the poison work? Have you ever wondered this thing? How God protects his children? Somebody poisoned food for you. And because he did not do nothing to deserve that food, the poison gets to you. But if you had worked for that food, no matter what poison they put in there, no matter what witchcraft they put in that food, it will not get to you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That is why in this kingdom there's no room for lazy people, idlers, those who go around begging for everything. God says we must use our hands to walk. Use your hands to walk. With love in your heart, that hand will be blessed. That hand will be blessed. So, you must use your hand to work. He wants us to be industrious. So that he can bless you. Stop being lazy. Stop taking people's food for nothing. He said, God bless me. Somebody dash me food. Dash me this. Dash that. Dash that. You are lazy. He said, don't be lazy. Use your hands to walk. And the Almighty Father will bless those hands. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you are working for somebody, work with all amount of honesty. Do not steal. Do not take anything that is not given to you. Because most people, when once they walk, they go there to steal, to rob. And in the end, what happened? You didn't know that you were robbing yourself. If you come so poor, you put your hand here, it doesn't work. Put your hand there, it doesn't work. So dear brethren, God sees all of us. No matter where you are, as long as you have love for God, love for humanity, Love for your enemies, those who claim to hate you. Love them. Don't hate them back. Because the moment you hate them back, the Spirit of God leaves you. All those who go around wasting their time, forcing themselves into the work of God. Some will say, I have tried everything. I have gone here, gone there. They say, the work of God is for me. I must do the work of God. Are you sure? that you are telling the truth? Because he must give you the spirit to do the work, you know? In any case, all of us must do the work of God, whether we like it or not. It is not until you stand in the altar and preach that you are doing the work of God. The work of God comes in different phases. Even the gift you give to the poor, the needy, that is the work of God now. It is not until you stand and preach from the altar. And those who use the wicked, the workers of God, they poison them, they do all kinds of things. Isn't that we we'll get away scot free? You cannot get away scot free. You will be punished for it. Especially if that worker of God did not do you anything. And of course, we've been told not to be afraid. As long as you have love. You believe in him. Whatever anybody would try on you, it cannot work. Do you hear me? Is that not why he tells you, don't be afraid? As long as you have him, as long as you are working for him, as long as you put his words into practice, you don't have to be afraid of anybody because he himself will be watching your back. He'll be watching you. Did you hear me? Uh-huh. That is why. 
The man standing here is the rock of offense. Amen. Eh? I say it's the rock of offense. Oh. Amen. Christ Ambassador, are you there? Uh -huh. He will tell you more. I think there's a book you've written on it. Who will launch that book one of these days? Somebody doesn't do anything to you. All he has towards you is love. And you go to fight that person. Is it you who succeed? Eh? He can never succeed. Amen. I say he will never succeed, oh! Yeah. That's why we must all have love. Love is enough protection for you. We love God will guide you. He will direct you. He will do everything for you. All those who have pretentious love, you will go empty-handed. That is why fire doesn't want all the wicked people to come in here. He does not. Who would love in your heart? You are free to be here. Because you are in a new heaven, new earth, where righteousness is the order of the day. I even ask how many people are righteous here. How many hands would I see up? Huh? Provided you have love for him. You love him. And you put his word into practice. He will be for you. He will work for you. He will protect you. He will guide you. Whatever your enemy will do to you at that point. Will they succeed? In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brethren. Dear brethren. Oh. May we hear our golden text once again. Now, our golden text is taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 12, reading from verse 54 to 56. And he said also to the people, When you see a cloud rise out of the west, straight away ye say, There cometh a shower, and so it is. And when ye see the south wind blow, ye say, There will be heat, and it cometh to pass. Ye hypocrite, ye can discern the face of the sky and of the earth. But how is it that ye do not descend this time? Peace may the Lord bless his holy word. Hallelujah. 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 Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. If there are Holy Spirit. Now tell me, how many know the time now? What time is it? What time is it, though? I don't say look at your time. I'm not talking about your clock. Hmm? What time is it? Tell me. Is it the time to serve the devil? Huh? Is this the time to serve God? This is the time to serve God. Because he has come. In full, oh, not half. Oh. That's why when you go against him, when you walk against him, he will take you away. To that hut without ceiling. Uh -huh. Eternal damnation. This is the time to serve him. This is the time to have love. To love all and sundry. Whether that person comes from your place or comes from another country, this is the time to love all, even your enemies. Because God has taken over. There is no time to waste. This is God's time. It's not the time of man who... Eh? That is why all the sorcerers have no more power. All the societies, he has taken power from them. Because this is his time. 
Nothing they do in that the secret places that will work. It will not work. Oh. Especially for the children of God. Those who have love, those who believe in him, those who put his words into practice, they have no power over you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, native doctors are using Olumba's name to cure, to do all kinds of things. I say he has taken over. Amen. Olumba has taken over everywhere. Those who believe in him, those who have surrendered to him, he said they will never see shame. Those who work for him will never be disappointed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Waiting I don't cry.
have a chance with the Holy Spirit. So, I think we've used the two spiritual choruses this afternoon. The last one and the first one. The writer of that song and this last one. Both of them will receive a quarter of a million naira each. So how many have received their golden key? Huh? How many have received their golden key? If you have received your golden key, go and be blessed! Would that last me to cross? I am stepping down. A stroke of the king, they say, is enough for the wise. So, therefore, he who has here, let him or her hear what the Holy Spirit has given to us this afternoon. I say, may he alone. May he alone. May he alone. Bless his holy words. <laughs>